What is that? Oh, it's a right at camp. <laughs> Can't see anything here. I'm deliberately making the fire between. Ooh, I'm half set up. Every 20 minutes I hear something out there. Andy's fishing and wild cook. <laughs> G'day, you're watching Andy's Fishing Wild Cook, the channel where I take you on adventures, catch some fish and cook them up as a delicious meal. I don't know if I'll regret it, but I've taken the seven foot Daiwa hyper rod with me couple of soft plastics, a couple of little hard bodies and yeah we're just um, cruising up this big river trying to catch our dinner hopefully there's um yeah there's quite a few storms around if you have a look up there bit of blue sky um, and then yeah quite a lot of a lot of grey going on so hopefully we don't get caught up in a storm but we've got enough stuff um, we've got a hoochie mosquito tent oh, I'll show you that as we go um, I'm gonna have to cover a few more miles I think but yeah there's a good spot just here. This here almost looks like a road going into the river. But what it is, is a, a channel where the when the river floods, the water just pumps through here and it keeps this open. I reckon this is actually a very good spot for a fish. This ground is really soft. It's got a lot of, um, yeah, like rotten leaf litter and timber in it. But I reckon if I can get a cast down here, without getting, oh, I'm caught up. Oh, straight out, oh! <laughs> lost him oh that was never gonna end well oh I just went over that branch and got smacked that was cool oh, oh. <laughs> some light just freaked me out there I thought it was coming to get me oh I'm I am a little bit jumpy because yeah I have seen a four meter croc in this hole This pool here actually looks pretty good. I might leave my backpack here and go for a bit of a explore this way. But I think we'll jump across the other side and walk like that way because it's going to be easier. But I want to have a little fish yeah, just along here. Oh, that was a hit. Oh, another hit. <laughs> I think they might be little tarpon. That's pretty cool. I was just looking around the corner here. There's some rocks Yeah, on this side. I might see how far I can get, if I can get close to them. Ah, just crawling under the vines here to get further. And check this out. There is, I think it's a weed. I'm not 100% sure. I saw another one of these back there. It was eaten. Let's have a look inside it. Ooh, that looks nice and juicy. Hmm, don't know. Yeah, the, that vine leaf, that, that doesn't yeah, appeal to me anyway. We'll keep crawling this way and get through. Oh, that's why I've left the backpack behind. This here may not look like anything to the normal person, but see how there's grass there, grass there, and nothing here? And then there's a big pile of um, debris here. Oh, this is what a crocodile nest looks like. They, um, they slide out of the water, and then they have a little mound that they, they bury their eggs in. So I hope I don't find one of those along here. It could freak me out a lot. Especially when you can't see walking like this. Here, yeah, crocky, crocky, crocky. Let's see if there's anything through this little gap here. Very, very hard to cast here. There we go. Kind of want that lure to go right in front here. Oh, there's a whole bunch of mullet just swam past. Right where my lure is now. Got water either side of me, which freaks me out a little bit. Okay. Oh, fish just jumped there. And you can probably hear it, it is really windy at the moment, which is why I'm not out in the ocean. Okay, I'm thinking this is a bad plan. This stuff here is actually, yeah, quite spiky and it's all through here. It goes all the way there and all the way down to the water. Oh, that was a really bad idea. I just got hammered by a couple of wasps. One on the back of the right arm and one down here on the side. Oh, that could be one there. Let's get out of here. It's happened before, and I haven't had a reaction, so I should be okay. But yeah, always a worry when something whacks you. It's like um, like someone sticking a really big needle and just going whack. We've had the first few storms of the wet season, and at my place we had. Oh come on, let go, let go. Oh. I had um, I'm going to say about three inches of. Oh, that got me. Look at that, right in the jubbly jubblies. 
Oh, man. Okay. I'll have to start that again, I think. <laughs> oh, it's not easy through here. Oh, come on. Oh, I should have picked a better place to film this section, this segment. So, yeah, I'm hoping that the river is um, flowing. Um, oh, there's a stinging tree. Check that, almost walked into it. That's a gimpy, gimpy stinging tree. Um, I've had those at least half a dozen, maybe even 10 times, and they're really nasty. They hurt for months, if not years. So we'll go around that guy. Oh. But yeah, hoping for flowing water. Uh, last time I was here, it was only just trickling. Mm. Oh, I am really not doing well in this section. Oh, check this out. That's a skull of something. Definitely a catfish, 100% catfish. You've got the dorsal spike, and then they have this sort of, yeah, like crucifix looking underside of their skull. That's pretty cool. Poor little guy, hey? <laughs> Let's see if we can get to the other side. I don't think so. Oh, we're about five meters short. We'll fish it. Just keep an eye out for crocodiles because they are in here. Away from the river, the, the walking's a little easier. <laughs> oh, but there's still booby traps everywhere. And I don't know if I'll regret having a seven foot rod in here, but it's doing okay so far. Okay, this I think I can reach as long as I can get the cast through here. Let's see. Oh, perfect. Oh, that was a fish. Fish just moved right next to my lure. Yep, I'm getting hits there. Oh, plastic's messed up. That was definitely a hit. There we go. I'll try and hit that spot again. Oh, I looked away. <laughs> what have we got? It hit it full speed. Oh, I think it's tarpon. Yep, it's a tarpon. Oh. That's cool, first fish of the trip. Again, look around for crocodiles. There we go. Nice little tarpon, always a bit of fun. Hey, off you go, buddy. There he goes. Boy, boy. <laughs> Stand away from that water. Oh, tell you what, these, these plastics are quite tough. That's like going inside itself there. Hmm. Then the next thing we'll do is we'll find a campsite and dump all this gear because there's about, I'm going to say about 12 kilos on my back. Um, so yeah, Ooh, get off me. Okay, I'm already re regretting taking a seven foot rod in here. Sometimes I do things so that you don't have to. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was kind of a silly idea. I just, I like using this rod. But um, yeah, I'm in here now, so I'll keep using it. This is actually the same plastic that I used oh, probably almost all of the last episode. So they're, they're fairly long lasting and I, I like lures that are long lasting. That way you can use less of them. Ooh, something just right here. Oh, there you go. And that might be more tarpon. Sometimes the mangrove jacks hang out with them. Check out this massive tree hanging out over the water. And I've just noticed there's, um, yeah, there's actually quite a few storm clouds. Hmm. I mean, oh, yeah, a storm would be nice because it'd cool things down. It is actually quite hot. Here's a, another bunch of good rocks. I'll have a go at these. Uh, putting the backpack down when I can is, is actually a really good thing. Hmm. No fishes. Check this guy out. <laughs> It's hanging from this massive tree on some vines. It's a golden orchid. Have a look at that. He's just dangling there. That's his root ball right here. Because orchids are actually an air plant. Let's have a look. There's some more flowers here. Very cool. <laughs> he's, he's still got more roots going on there. And I reckon the salt water would probably come up to about here. So, yeah, he's hanging in for dear life. Oh, guess what guys? This looks so cool. Oh, I'm gonna show you in two seconds. Woohoo! <laughs> I 
Oh, how nice is this? This is fresh water running. I'm glad. I'm glad the um, the rains actually made the river flow. Oh, after a long hike like that, I really love having a um, yeah a nice dip in the water. Woo. For safety's sake, I've seen crocodiles in that pool there, and the salt water pushes up to just below here, below my feet. So I've seen crocodiles downstream from here as well. So I'm choosing this little spot here. That's why I'm not like fully submerged. Um, it's enough to get me wet and cool. The water's about, I'm gonna say, about 26 degrees Celsius. And yeah, oh, it's lovely. So I'm gonna sit here a little while and then yeah, go find camp. There's a snake if you can see it. There he is right on the surface. We're coming up to a water hole here. And I have seen a crocodile in here, so we're going to sneak up and see if we can film him. I imagine he'll be in the water. Don't see anything. No, he's not here. Last time he was over there. I'm just going to try a different colour jerk bait. Oh, tarpon, I think. Silver flash, as I can see. A little guy for a big lure. I think that's a, yeah, five inch lure, five inch jerk shad. And he's got to be like, not even, oh, maybe 10 inches long or something. Let's have a look at you. Oh, he's a little bigger than that. Oh, yummy, buddy. There we go. Let's have a look. He is eh, 30 centimeters. Come back, come back. Oh. Off you go. Oh, there you go. What I really want is a mangrove jack. Because it's out of barramundi season. So, it's, oh, that was a nice hit. And he messed the plastic up. Oh, there's a few fish over there. Oh, 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 there's a mangrove jack. There's my dinner. My dinner's just swum away. <laughs> Actually, he's still sitting there. He's still sitting there. I've lost him. I'll look down. But he, yeah, he wasn't too far away. Let's see if we can get him. He was a good size too, I thought. No, he's not coming back. Oh, how's that? I just talked about it and he came right to my feet. All right, let's go back over there. Oh, that's a good cast. Good spot. Oh, that was a jack. He just hit it. And he's right here. He's looking at it. Yep, he spat it out. No, oh, he messed it up. He's, yeah, he's still sitting there. Oh, that's a hit. Oh, I got him. Yes. Oh, what is it? Oh, barramundi. Little barramundi. Come on, guy. I'll let you go. Ah. Oh. Very healthy looking little barra. I wanted the I wanted the mangrove jack that came out. Hey. Beautiful little fish. He would be two years old I'm thinking. Hey? Alright, let's let you go. And I know there's a mangrove jack right next to where you are. There he is. <laughs> cool. Oh, and he turned that inside out. Look at that. That lure's been turned inside out. Right past that tree. That's a good spot. Oh, that was a touch. Oh, I had a looker there. And another looker. Yeah, they're right on that. Oh, oh I missed him. That was a... I don't know what that was. Let's go right on that ledge there. That's where they are. Let's have a look in here. This is uh, looks very flat. It's a little close to the water for me. Uh, uh, I could put my hoochie there. Actually, I think I'll put it up there. Yeah, that's it. We are a little close to the water here for my liking. 
Uh, what I might do is set up a um, like an alarm system. So if anything walks through here, it'll wake me up. But yeah, this spot here, yeah, that actually looks pretty good right here. Just a bit close to the water. Oh, it feels so good getting this backpack off. Oh, leave that there and we'll fish on because I do want to catch a fish for dinner. I know I said I was going to set camp up first, but we've found camp. And yeah, I really want to eat fish for dinner. So it's probably 3.30, maybe 4 o'clock. We'll give it an hour and a half. And that hopefully is enough time to get dinner and come back in the in the daylight. <laughs> My famous last words. Might have a couple of casts right from camp before we go anywhere. Just in case. Yeah, that wind's blowing. At least 20 knots. I think actually I think it was forecast 30 today. So I'm glad I'm not. Oh, that was a fish. There's a swirl. Glad I'm not out in the water. Oh, that was a nice sized fish. Let's see if we can get him. Yeah, he didn't didn't mess the plastic up. The hook's exposed, but that's yeah, I don't mind that. These are funny looking fruit. I've never seen them before. Guys, what do you think these fruit remind you of? <laughs> That is bizarre. They're like a double nut, <laughs> for want of a different word. Yeah. They don't, they don't seem to be any right ones there. Let's split one open and see what's oh, really hard. Yeah. Oh, and they smell, hmm, they smell really bitter. That's not usually a good sign. Anyway, interesting. Never seen that before. Let's see if there's anything right at my feet here. Some of them hide in the grass. Oh, tiny little barramundi. We don't want him. He's still sitting there. We'll go the other way. I want a mangrove jack. Actually, a tarpon. I could probably take a tarpon too. I shouldn't have let that other one go, should I? Oh! Just got whacked by that little barrow again. <laughs> Let's move. He's only like you know, 30 centimeters or so. Let's see if there's anything in this gap here. Cannot see, but we'll give it a shot. Oh, just had a swirl. Just had a swirl. Okay, we'll do that again. Now I'm wading in knee deep water. This is a massive hole, but yeah, it's very shallow all up here, and yeah, a little bit over here, but I think on this side it might be a bit deeper. Let's have a look. Fish right past those lily pads. Come on. I'm holding the rod up nice and high, so... Oh, there's a hit. So it stays out of the weeds as much as possible. Oh. Had a hit there. Come on. No. Oh, I can't see what, what's going on there. There's another big fig tree hanging right out over the water. Just wonder if I can get through there to fish. Looks a bit challenging. Oh. Yeah, I think I might be able to. Lean up against this palm tree here. Okay, casting's restricted, but I'll get into some deeper water here. Let's see. Oh, tree got me. It's about as far as I can cast. That way and that way. Don't have a lot of options here. I've just spotted a black brim, or pikey brim, just in front of me. I can't see him at this second. But I might change to a small lure. That's um, that's a bit big for him. But yeah, I reckon I could get him. Let's see. I'll give it a shot. I'm just going to change lures to see if um, yeah, this will work any better. 
Uh, I noticed that both of these actually glow, so that's cool. Um, I reckon we might do some night fishing. Get the torch and, yeah, light this thing up. Because I'm having my doubts that we're going to catch dinner before it's dark. But we'll keep going. There's a lot of, lot of weed all through the river here. And the fish can be spread out and just hiding almost anywhere. Here's a nice log pile. Let's see if there's anything hiding along it. Let's have a hit. Oh, another miss. Oh, another miss. Come on. Oh, there's another one. Oh, that was a hit. Uh, it's about four hits there, I think, or three and a miss or something like that. Let's see. Nope. Not coming back. Tough fishing today. Oh, there's that splash again. That's tarpon for sure. Had a looker there, two lookers. Not hitting that. Another looker. Oh, right at my feet. Little guy. Didn't even see him. Oh, how are we going to let you go? He was right here at my feet. Little tiny, very healthy little barramundi. Hey, hope you grow to be nice and big and strong. Hey, off you go, little buddy. Oops, a little, little weird flip there. Let's try a bit further out again. Oh, there was a tarpon just to the right of my lure. Oh, and he hit it. Didn't all stick, eh? Yeah, I'm kind of regretting I didn't keep that tarpon. But who wants to eat a tarpon there? They're all just full of bones and everything. A bit of weed, I think. Oh, uh, that's the little barramundi there. I can see two of them swimming around. I'll see if I can get the underwater camera so I can film them. I don't want to catch them. I'll bury that hook so that they'll have a hard time getting it, but I can't see them at the moment. Don't know where they are. I'll just cast out nice and wide and see if that'll that'll bring them in. Oh, that was a hit straight away. I don't know what that was. Oh, here he comes. He's right near the camera. <laughs> Let's see if I can get him up near the surface so you can look at him. I don't want to catch him. He's not coming closer to the camera. We'll have another cast out here. He can just sit there looking, looking at the camera. Oh, that was a hit. Something. Oh, little tarpon. Oh, tiny tarpon. Really tiny tarpon. Yeah, and the barramundi, he's like about a metre away. I don't think he's going to come closer to the camera. We'll do one last cast out wide. See if that's, um, if the commotion stirred up any bigger fish. Oh, had a look at there. Oh, and another looker. Here we go. Oh, no, don't eat it. <laughs> that was that barramundi. There he is. He's sitting right there. Okay, it looks pretty bright in the camera, but I can tell you it's getting quite late, so I'm heading back to camp. I've gone, oh, let's see, probably two and a half, three kilometers. Um, pretty rough going. It's all just really thick. Um, set up camp and then, yeah, maybe have another fish. Oh in the pond, the pool, uh, the lagoon, where we're camping. Uh, but it's always, yeah, always a bit of a challenge in here. Here's something interesting, I almost walked over. This is a vine, I've seen these plenty of times. But check this out. That there looks very much like the Monsterio Deliciosa seed pod, or whatever you call it. Um, has it got segments? Yes, it's even got segments. Hang on, let's smell it. Nah, it doesn't smell good. Anyway, that's that's interesting find. I'll have to look that one up and see what it is. All right, here we are back at camp. I wonder if I should set up in here. This is actually, yeah, reasonably hard ground, whereas over there it's a little too too soft and my um my bed's gonna sink into it. Oh I guess it's not that much different really, is it? 
yeah, that camera makes it look really bright, but it's yeah, the sun's probably just about to set. There's um, a bit of reflection coming off the, the clouds up there. So we got blue sky with with clouds and that. Um, what I was gonna say, it's actually really uncommon to find flat ground like this. Like that's that's almost dead flat um, in this sort of area because you've got all the hills coming down into the creek. And um, here there's no shortage of green ants. Anyway, let's set up camp. These are actually all pretty noxious sort of weeds. That's, that's interesting. Hmm. Mosquito netting. <laughs> Tell you what, it's so quiet in here. There's a bunch of birds you can hear, but not much else. It actually feels like the wind slowed down. Not sure if it was clear before, but I've got each corner tied to a different tree. And then the apex I got going up here. So the string's pulling it up and the water all shed off everywhere. I spoke too soon. I can hear the yeah the winds howling still. Uh, this is the I think the third time I'm using my camp cot. The first time was really uncomfortable. Um, the second time on the boat was actually not too bad. Um, oh what is that? Oh there's a crocodile. Look at that. That's a two plus meter crocodile. I'll see if I can get the other camera. But he's gonna be underwater soon. Yep, he's taken off. He's taken off. Oh man. Oh, oh. I'm not gonna get him. That bow wave is from him. Oh, that was like. Yeah, two and a half, maybe. No, it wouldn't be quite three metre. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Look where camp is. <laughs> That's where he was. Oh, man. I'm not happy. That was a cro saltwater crocodile. Right at camp. What do I do? He knows where I am now. Oh, this is not good. Um, but he did take off. Oh, man. He took off like he was a bit scared because he saw me move. Um, he would... Yeah, he is much stronger than I am. Whether he knows it or not, I don't know. Oh, what to do? Oh, man. I'm half set up. It's getting dark. <sighs> he was right there. Right there. <laughs> oh. that. That's a two plus meter crocodile. Oh, jeez. I knew this day would come. I mean, have a look. Have a look what that's. That's my other option. Is um, yeah. It's uneven. It's it's getting dark. I might have a quick walk in there and see what I can find. I think people were thinking I was paranoid saying there's crocodiles, crocodiles, crocodiles. And in in a hundred years, I would never have said I will see a crocodile swimming right in front of me whilst I'm setting up camp, <laughs> like in the afternoon. That is insane. And he was a he was actually quite solid. He wasn't huge, like long, but he was one healthy animal. Bit of a side gully here. Let's have a look, see if that opens up. And, and there's a flat area. Yeah, there is too. Oh, I don't really want to camp in here, but I can't walk out now. Oh. Yeah, this is um, a fair way away from the water. And there'll be one direction he's coming, so I can set up like an alarm system here. Um, and also, yeah, there's a lot of leaves on the ground here, so it's quite noisy. I'm going to shift my camp to here. 
Oh, palm frongs. I'll put some palm frongs on the ground. So when he tries to walk over those, I can hear him at night. I just hope I don't snore and, yeah, don't hear him. Here's the other thing. Earlier today, I found a spot that was a little bit, well, about the same depth as that. Maybe a little shallow, a little bit deeper, I don't know. I would never have thought during daylight hours a crocodile would go through that shallow water. I wanted to have a swim <laughs> and cool down. Oh, I don't know if that's going to happen now. I've got to yeah, relocate everything. I'm definitely going to go spotlighting for his eyes tonight. Seeing if he's um, hanging around here or, or what. <laughs> Do you think I'd push it too far? Crocodile right in camp? Oh, lucky I'm aware and I, I heard him, but... Yeah, imagine if I didn't hear him and stayed here. That would be bad. It's really starting to get dark now. Oh, I was all set to, to cook before it got dark and then that happened. I'm probably 30 metres from the water, up a little gully. Um, I'll probably, I don't know, I, I, I don't know. I probably won't have a good night's sleep, I can tell you that. The other interesting thing is, I was in knee deep water in some of those water holes already today. Um, that's, yeah, it's really quite shaken me up. I'm trying to get this done as fast as possible because um, you might not believe me, but I still want to have a, a little dip in that water right, pretty much right where I saw that crocodile. Um, probably not the wisest thing to do, um, but I really, I, I just need to, need to cool myself down. And get rid of the salt and sweat off me. Yeah, doing that in the dark would be suicide. I tell you what though, if I'd planned that, I couldn't have planned that any better. <laughs> that is just nuts. Oh, you gotta look on the bright side of things. I just hope I wake up tomorrow alive. <laughs> oh, insanity. Feel free to put any comments you want on this video. There's gonna be, <laughs> there's gonna be some, yeah. Some interesting comments for sure. Don't hold back either. Don't hold back. I know I'm an idiot and crazy. Oh. Let's see if he's hanging around. He won't be hanging around here. I'm pretty sure it's too shallow. Oh, I can't see him anywhere. I've really got to jump in that water. I need to cool down. While there's still just enough light like this. I feel quite okay, <laughs> but yeah, kind of okay, kind of not okay. Can you hear that noise? I'm pretty sure that's a, I have to think of the name now. They're a big frog, um, greater barred frog. They're, they're definitely a type of barred frog. Um, I'm just getting ready to go for a swim here and they all started up. Thought I'd share that with you. Anyway, um, it is getting, yeah, quite dark. Um, out here it's still, yeah, you can still see a little bit. Um, if I don't do it now, I won't do it. So I've got to do it in the next two minutes, I think. Whoa, I don't know, I don't know. Man, I'd normally take my glasses off for this, but not tonight. I want to see everything I can see and that is very little. Have a look in the water here. That reflection there, that's exactly what I can see. Oh man, I think it's just going to be a little splashy splashy and that's it. can't believe I'm in the water right, like there was a crocodile here like half an hour ago. And the other thing is, I walked across here before as well. Oh man. Let's get out of here. Oh, this does feel good though. The barramundi, just like, they, they, when they kick, they thump their tail. He just swam up right here. I think everything's moving upstream. Um, possibly in anticipation of um, the floods coming. Um, cause yeah, it's, it's the wet season and yeah, the storms are going to get more frequent. Um, I'm taking a little longer than, than I should because I've got the, um, the skins peeling off my back from a couple of episodes ago. Well, last episode actually. 
Um, yeah, but that, that little barrel just, it was probably about a 50 centimeter barrel just went doo -doo -doo right in front of me. That freaked me out. It is now really dark. You can't, you can't even see me there. Let's see this. Where's my silhouette? There's my silhouette there. Let's get away from this water. I survived having a quick showery thing. <sighs> Let's get a fire going. Now to find camp. Uh, it's not too hard. Oh, look at that. There's figs. <laughs> Always find something. Yeah, these are yeah, very unripe figs. Oh, I think I've eaten them before. They're actually quite tasty when they're yellow. Hmm. Anyway, I think we're through here. I haven't shown you the new camp properly. And it's going to be a bit hard, but yeah, that's basically it there. Um, I've got the opening facing away from the water, so if I do need to exit quickly, I can run the other way. Ah, it's a little beetle. Ah, that's what's been flying around, making all sorts of buzzing noises. Get him away from the fire. Off you go, buddy. I'm deliberately making the fire between me and the river. <laughs> I'm quite happy I've got a fire going tonight. I'm going to, um, yeah, try and find some bigger bits of timber and keep it smouldering as long as I can before I go to bed. <sighs> I guess now's the time to talk about crocodile stories. <laughs> oh, this here, what I'm doing, is probably one of the more dangerous things I've done. Two and a half metre, I'm pretty sure, like I'm almost two metres long and he was a much bigger animal than I am. Um, Although I am a bit of an animal, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, this, this is a little bit how you go. So there was one time, Rodney, you'll remember this one, we were hunting in a swamp and we, we were trying to shoot pigs on the other side of the swamp with bows and we waded across this swamp and the next day we saw a four and a half metre crocodile right where we crossed and then we went a little further up and crossed anyway and to me, that was the most stupid thing I've ever done. Um, hopefully you're not doing that anymore, Rodney. Uh, then I've had, um, in the Northern Territory when I was guiding, I was actually taking a whiz off the back of the boat and a crocodile literally popped his head up right underneath me. He was probably only two meters long, so I didn't feel that threatened, but yeah, it stopped me whizzing real quick. Uh, and the other time, um, this, yeah, this is an interesting story. I was fly fishing at Hinchinbrook with a friend and about a five meter croc popped up right next to the boat and then he followed us for about, well, I'm going to say close to an hour. Now, I didn't think that was such a big drama. A um, few locals kicked up a stink about it. Um, it actually got on Channel 7 News as well. And just, I think it was earlier this year, a sailor got taken in the same spot and I guarantee it was the same crocodile. Because what happens is people feed them, they get used to boats, and then they're looking for food. I mean, people say, oh, he's friendly, he's just, you know, hanging out. It's like, no, no, he's waiting until he can grab your kid or your dog um, or you. So, yeah, this sailor paid with his life. Um, I'm not sure if they actually got the croc that did it. They got two smaller ones. Um, but yeah, crocodiles are no joking matter. And that's why I've got this fire going between me and the water. I am a little bit freaked out. Not much I can do. I can't I can't walk out of here now. There's, there's no way in buggery I can walk out. This is probably the safest place away from the water that I can find that's going to give me some sort of night's sleep. I'm going to throw some food in the fire. What I did, I got some potatoes cut them in half, put butter, onion and garlic inside um, and then also some pumpkin, cut them in, in discs, put uh, I think butter with salt and pepper. So yeah they should be really nice once they're done. I was hoping for fish but yeah I think Mr. Crocodile's eating his share of fish. He, he was a really healthy looking animal. Um, I'll probably play the video footage again at the end of the video. Um, for me, that was that was a once-in-a-lifetime thing to have a crocodile literally come right past camp, or you know, almost in camp. Like that's my shower. He went through my shower. <laughs> so yeah, very wild. Normally, I don't burn more wood than I absolutely have to, but tonight 
I am making an exception, taking my own safety into account. And oh, there we go. I have a quick squeeze in the water. See if we can see his eye shine. You guys won't see a thing. And it's actually not 100% dark. I think that might be the moon making light up there. So, yeah. When there's any light at all, um, crocodile's eyes tend to not dilate. And yeah, very hard to spot even with a torch. I did consider going downstream um, away from where he was going because he's heading upstream. But what if there's a bigger crocodile pushing him upstream? So yeah, I'm just a sh well hoping I scared the crap out of him and he's going that way. Because um, he did, did give a bit of a kick um, after I saw him. And well, I can't see eye shine now, but yeah, I think fire and being away from the water is my best bet. But I did want to show you this, the, um, the lure glowing. Hopefully this will work. There you go. Look at that. <laughs> uh, I was looking forward to fishing that, but yeah, with little access in the water here and that guy swimming around, I'll have to do that another time. I think a bat just landed in the tree right next to me here. Let's see if we can find him. Yeah, I think he's up a bit higher. That was a big one too. Yeah, actually they're called flying foxes, they're not bats. Yeah, no, I can't see him. Oh, there he is. Way up. Big eyes. wonder what he's eating. Oh, see the tree. Oh, there he goes. No, no, he's actually climbing down towards me. Wow. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, I can't, I can't. Oh, he's going to take off. Hopefully you heard him. <laughs> It's all going off here. Okay, I'd prefer coals, but if I wait for coals, it's going to be way too late to eat. So we're just going to throw them on the edge of the fire here. It's actually quite warm. The edge there. The potatoes have been in about, I don't know, 10 minutes. I'm going to put the pumpkin on top and uh, let it go at least another 10, maybe 15 minutes. I'll tell you what, as soon as I started that fire, it got too hot to wear a shirt. I'm actually, yeah, really warm sitting right next to it. I'm just thinking, while I got you guys here, I'm going to put a survey at the bottom of this video in the description. If you could answer that, um, what I want to do is I want to make a bunch of videos to help you guys fish better. I'm going to do uh, novice first or beginner, intermediate, and then all the way up to some of the crazy stuff that I do. Well, that's, that's what I'm thinking at, this mo at the, the moment. Um, I'm going to try and do a launch date before Christmas. I'm, I'm thinking second week in December, something like that. Uh, but yeah, so definitely, yeah, do the survey. Oh, and, oh, here we go. <laughs> Almost forgot. I'm going to pick three winners at random, and they're each going to get a pair of Mako sunglasses. I've still got a couple of Mako sunglasses left over. I, I, I wear Bolle now, but um, they're, they're really good glasses. Nothing wrong with them. Um, so yeah, if you want to win, win a pair of Mako sunglasses, there's, there's three up for grabs. Do the survey, um, it'll help me out as well, and hopefully around December, uh, mid-December or so, I'll be helping you out as well. I've heard some, um, yeah, crashing noises, um, some weird noises. I don't think I'm going to sleep well tonight at all. Um, and I was really keen to use that, that glow-in-the-dark lure, but not now. Um, yeah, it's just not safe. Not safe at all. Okay, potatoes are done. To check if they're done, you get a knife and you stick it through them and see if they're soft. You can use a barbecue skewer. Let's have a look. Oh, look at that. I haven't even burnt them. Oh, <laughs> they're looking yummy. Oh, they smell divine. That garlic and onion with the butter. Mm. Uh, hopefully you can see that little tiny bit of caramelizing on on the corners and just to, on the onion. Oh, this is going to be nice. And there's a pumpkin. Let's have a look at the pumpkin. Oh, look at that. That is pretty good. 
Mm -mm. Three potatoes and two pieces of pumpkin there. Hopefully it's all in the shot. Mm, it does smell delicious. Mm. Mm, done to perfection. The secret with doing vegetables in aluminium foil is you need probably three or four layers of foil. Let's try a bit of pumpkin. And then I'll turn the light out. Mmm, very sweet. Everything here is done, done well. I'm guessing about 20 plus minutes. 10 or 12 for the pumpkin. And 20 to 23 for the, the potato. Those um, barred frogs, they've kind of stopped. There's, there's at least two or three other types of frogs. Um, and then there's also some cane toads which I can hear. They make that. Yeah, it's probably quite wrong. Um, there was a couple hopping around in camp before. I'll see if I can show you one. Complete pests and they, they actually kill other animals when they eat them. And um, yeah, enjoy the... Oh, that fruit bed's back. <laughs> oh, as soon as it rains, everything comes to life. And we've only had like probably one really big storm. So, yeah, where I'm sitting here, after a good storm, it would probably have two, three foot of water running through here. So, but yeah, I'm pretty sure there's no, no actual storms forecast tonight. Hey, the fire is going to be my first defense against the crocodile. And then I've got my pots, which I'm going to put these tent poles. Actually, they're not tent poles, they're um, camp cots holes so I'm gonna link them all up and hopefully somewhere like that if anything bumps them I um, should wake up because I'll tell my brain to listen for little metallic noises that's that's the plan anyway I'm gonna go down to the water just one more time to see if I can see any eye shine If he's going to come from anywhere, he'll come come through through this stuff here. Um, definitely easy for him to do that. Which is why I've set up my alarm. Can't see anything here. Let's go to the other hole. Uh, yeah, can't see anything here either. And it's raining. There's just sprinkling, just the tiniest. There you go. Look, you can see it. Sprinkling just the smallest amount. Oh, I hope we don't get a big storm. Where'd that cane toad go? I heard him. There he is. That's the guys that are making a lot of noise at the moment. See? And they've actually got a lot of poison coming out of their glands here at the back of their head. And their whole skin is actually a big poison gland. So, yeah, stay away from those guys. On the way to bed, I found this little guy. Can you see him? That's him there. See how close I can get. That's a, I don't know the actual name of it, but they're a meat-eating cricket. They only eat meat that's decomposing. That's him there, right there. There you go. Probably not very sharp. Um, he's actually a small one. Um, I saw one before that was maybe, you know, that long. Oops, where am I? So yeah, he's he's about a third of the size. Let's get him to take off. Doing there he goes. <laughs> okay, let's go to bed. So that was an interesting day. First getting stung by I don't know if they were paper wasps or big orange hornets. I've been stung by big orange hornets before and it feels about the same. Um, I don't feel that pain anymore. So that's good. That crocodile was both freaky and very cool. Um, still a bit freaky. And oh, that wind's just starting up again now. Hopefully a tree doesn't fall on me. Um, yeah, I don't need more bad luck at the moment. Um, this bed is actually <laughs> leaning down that way at a, 
at a um, yeah, considerable gradient. So we'll see how that goes. I'm not moving it now. Um, so yeah, hopefully I don't see that croc and I'll see you guys in the morning. <sighs> freaky, freaky, freaky. All right, oh, hang on, we've got a spider. <laughs> Little guy here. Me? Eh? Yeah. Might just whack him down on the ground. There you go, he's running away. Oh, I didn't kill him. Just get him off there so he doesn't fall in my mouth when he's up there. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the morning. Every 20 minutes I hear something out there. Let's see what we can see. Oh. Oops. Yeah, I don't see what it is. I think it's just bandicoot. Mm. Get back to sleep. Well, sleep is not exactly what I'm doing at the moment. Good morning everybody. Oh, I made it through the night. Oh, didn't get much sleep. Oh, the noises, the frogs, the toads, the bandicoot. I don't know what else there was, but every now and then I'd pop my head up and have a look out the back to see if the croc was coming, but yeah, I was pretty sure he wasn't going to come and find me out here. We'll go wander over to the water hole and uh, yeah, see if we can spot him. I'm alive! It's always very dark in there. I think the yeah, sun's already up. I must have got some sleep, but it really doesn't feel like it. My early warning system is still intact. I don't think anything even bumped into that. The chances of seeing this crocodile are pretty much slim to none. Even if he is in this water hole, he'll be pretty much fully submerged. And the water hole is, I don't know, 200 meters long. And we can only see a little bit of it at a time. Oh, there you go, some brim. That's pretty cool. Oh, there's like 10 of them. 10 black brim, pikey brim. Might have a little fish. I actually heard some splashing further up in the water hole there. I might go and uh, yeah, check that out. I've grabbed a couple of lures and my night shirt because there are a few mosquitoes around. Let's see if we can catch some breakfast. You can see bubbles out in the middle here. Actually yeah, there's rings over there. So there's definitely fish moving, um, but today I'm going to be a lot more cautious about going near the water. That crocodile definitely freaked me out. And yeah, an animal that size will definitely attack me, and yeah, he's a lot stronger than I am. What's that? Some sort of, I don't know, little red bird. That's cool. That's in the zone. That's right where the bubbles are. Oh, there's a flash behind the lure. Didn't go for it, but. Got a Brahmini kite up there, just flying above the treetops. Saw a sea eagle just before as well. There we go. Oh, that was a flash. Oh, got him. Oh, it's a barramundi. And good, he dropped off. Yeah, I don't want to catch barras because they're out of season and that's why the crocodile's actually in here for the barramundi if you've got barramundi in a river system oh that was a hit you've definitely got crocodiles 
Okay, let's move on a little bit. Let's see if I can get up on here. Oh, it's a bit of a challenge, I think. Solid. Okay. Oh. Oh, got a seat for fishing. <laughs> let's see if we can reach those lily pads over there. Oh, right amongst them. We can get that again. Pretty much the same spot. Oh, another hit. I think these fish are so used to... Oh, little barramundis. <laughs> Two of them about this big. They just followed me right in. I think the fish here are so used to um, eating cone toads that when they whack it, if it doesn't taste right, they spit it out instantly. And that's why I'm getting so many hits and not many hookups. Because that smells like plastic. Oh, that was a tiny barra. Stop it, stop it. <laughs> Oop, and he followed me right in again. Oh, there's a lot of small barra in here. Let's go over this way. Oh. It's actually good to see small barra. They're the, yeah, the, the next generation coming through. And actually, I've seen more little barra this trip than I have probably all year, so that's great. And if you skipped over the part where I mentioned the survey, have a look in the description of the video for the survey. Please fill it out. Um, help me, help yourself. Oops, that was another hit. Um, oh, and another hit. That could have been a mangrove jack, that one. Um, I want to try and launch something bef just before Christmas, a couple of weeks before Christmas. And um, if you put, if you have input, then it's going to be more what you guys will appreciate. So yeah, I'd really appreciate it if you filled that survey out. And you can win some sunglasses. I've got three pairs of Makos that I'm going to give away randomly to people who've done the survey. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a little barramundi right in the shallows here. He's only in that much water. He's now he's moving out into deeper water. That is cool. He was just sitting right here. And he's gone. <laughs> I like seeing stuff like that. I won't film packing up camp. I'll just pull all the stuff out so you can see what there is. There's the camp cot, ground mat, and my inflatable pillow. Oh, and the sleeping bag, somewhere in there. Where is it? There it is. Um, I don't need the sleeping bag at the start of the night, but by three or four in the morning, that's really nice to have. Let's hit the road, Jack. Oh, better not forget that. Come on, rod. And I always walk with the rod pointed backwards like so. That way, it's less likely to break. Although you still have to be very careful in here. Oh. See you, Mr. Crocodile. Walking's gonna be a bit harder today. Normally I'd go across there in like knee deep water, but now I'm gonna go through here, because yeah, I've just seen too many crocodiles in the last few trips. Oh. So yeah, we're battling the vines in the jungle. Come on, Rod. Let's see what we can find in here. So we're backtracking what we did yesterday. And we're heading out. Oh, there's a hit. Tarpon, I believe. Could have been something else. Don't know. Silverish looking. Oh, Barramundi followed me right in. <laughs> That's cool. Let's cast over that way. There's actually fish rising. They're tarpon over that way. I see a mangrove jack sitting in front of me here, right on the edge of the shadow. He should find this. No, nope, he shied away from it. That is no good at all. 
I can still see him sitting out there. Let's try a real fast one. Right in front of him. Nope. Huh. Spooky mangrove jack. Got a feeling we'll do better where the river turns tidal, like it's got um, like the salt water influence. Um, yeah, for some reason there just aren't many jacks around at the moment, at least up in the freshwater, so that's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping they're closer to the ocean. Check this out guys, it's a little goanna. He must have been cold last night because he's sunning himself. He's about oh, tip to tail 70 centimetres. Hey, what you doing little guy? Yeah, he's not, he's not, no, he's really chilled out. Normally when you get this close, they, um, they expand their throat and make themselves look bigger. But he's just chilling out, hey? What you doing? Now he's hissing at me. There he is. There he is. He's getting a bit aggressive. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm going to go the other way. You just keep sunning yourself. Hey? That's cool, you, you almost never see him that still. Hey? Yeah, he's a bit agitated. All right, I'm gonna leave you alone, buddy. See ya. I do really think down here is our best chance at a fish. Oh, we're not far from where I had a swim yesterday. I brought my back up again, and uh, easy to cook. I'm not sure I saw that rock yesterday, because we're backtracking now. Oh, not quite far enough. But yeah, that looks like a really good spot for a fish. Yep, got him. I got something. What is it? I reckon it could be a mangrove jack, the way it's fighting. Not real big. Let's have a look at him. It is, can't tell yet. Yes, a little mangrove jack. Oh. <laughs> oh, no, there's bigger in here. There we are, nice little mangrove jack. On the minnow. Let's let him go. Yeah, he'll take off real fast if he doesn't jump out of my hand before he gets in the water. No crocodiles. Oh, there he goes. Yep. There he is. Okay. Yep. Oh, that was a definite hit there. Yep. Oh, that's a nice hit. What have we got? Oh, I don't know yet. I think it could be another mangrove jack, the way it's fighting. Oh, it's a little bit, definitely bigger than the last one. Oh, I think it could be, is it a barramundi? Yeah, I think it's, yeah, little barramundi. And he's off. Good work. As I say, these trips are always, yeah, quite challenging. Very interesting though, especially that crocodile. Down that way we've got mangroves starting, and I'm going to put on the backpack one last time, and three hours through the bush over a ridge here um, to get out. So fill out that survey, let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time. If you're still here, I've picked out a special video just for you. Check it out.